today on an all-new Dr. Phil. This is so fake. It's so dramatic. I hope they're keeping Kyle is not fake. You're mad because you don't control the agenda. It seems like you say that to a lot of moms. The ones that enable their sons hear that a lot. What's been your history with drug and alcohol? I have a marijuana license. I just gave him a little one time. I am not sending this young man home to a toxic environment. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. It matters to you. That's what I want to talk about. Are we ready to move? Let's do it. My son, Kyle, is 16, and he's at a rehab facility called Hazel Street Recovery Center. Kyle started to do drugs. We found out he was smoking marijuana. My usual day was wake up in the morning, smoke a bowl in the bathroom, and then go to school, maybe smoke more. School's so boring, why not just, you know, smoke a bowl? Grades went down and he eventually got kicked out of the water polo and um, swim team. From A minuses and, and Bs to Fs, particularly in the last year, it's been horrendous, been awful. He's been expelled from school, he's been suspended from school. When he was expelled, I looked at his phone and saw that there was a lot of dealing going on on his phone. Pot references, Orange Crush, Purple Kush. He was also doing raves and ecstasy. He used Xanax, alcohol. One night, two of his friends brought him home. He couldn't even stand up. He was intoxicated. I knew he had a problem. My dog went under Kyle's bed and I heard this clink. I found two empty beer bottles under there. I stole my alcohol from the stores. I would just go in there and slide under my jacket or something and walk out. He stole a car. He stole a golf cart. He went in and out of his window. He just is on his own plan. It's like he doesn't respond to authority. He and his friend were walking home from school, and there was a construction site, and there was a huge water truck. Kyle gets into the truck and starts driving around the construction site. We'd smoke in the truck. We thought it'd be a fun idea if we just drove it around, and we drove it around and crashed into a fence on purpose because I was high, and uh, I thought it was funny. The, the police called and said, we have Kyle, and we need to come get him. I told him, leave him there for a while. I didn't just get a taste of it. His attitude was, no big deal. Kyle used to steal money all the time. He stolen money from me, he's stolen watches. We had to finally resort to a bolt lock to our bedroom door. I've stolen a lot of money from my parents over and over again. Kyle is defiant with me. You tell him, I need you to do your homework, and he just he says, I'm not going to do it. There's nothing you can do to the point where he'll get in a rage. Kyle's attacked me a couple of times. He, he tried to hit me and kick me. He just gets so frustrated and he gets so angry that he just lashes out. I don't know, I just get angry. It's no matter what you say, it, it's no. You know, you, you told him he, he couldn't go out. He, he'd cut the screen and go out of his window. I snuck out a lot when I wanted to go to a party or something and I just wouldn't even ask my parents, I would just go. Because like I figured if they're gonna tell me no, then they'll be mad or if I just don't tell them. These are all things that tell you your kid needs help. I reached out to Dr. Phil for several reasons. One, I knew we didn't have the skill set to handle what was going on. What we were doing was not working. The actual day of, of taking Kyle to Hazel Street, the transport company came to the house. At 4.30 in the morning, I was up waiting for him. They walked him into Kyle's room, turned on the light. Kyle kind of woke like, what's going on? and I left. I didn't know what was going on. They just pulled me out of my bed. I was like, what What are you doing? I was pretty mad and uh, disturbed, and I didn't get to say bye to my parents. You know, I didn't say bye to my dog or anything. It was pretty scary at the moment. I saw my stepdad come in and wake me up, and then they came in, so I mean, it was their choice, and it was going on. I, I had no control over it. I knew in my heart that that was the only way he was gonna go. It's kind of like an intervention. If you think your kids are in peril, you only have that time to work with where you're in control. I'm amazed at how quiet and how low key they were. And I timed him. They've got Kyle dressed and had him in that car in nine minutes. So they were very, very good. And then they called me and told me that he was safe at Hazel Street. Kyle says that he really wants to come home and he's been there long enough. I worry very much that when Kyle comes home, he's going to get hooked up with his bad kids again. I worry that he's going to fall into the same routine that he was in.
There's nothing sinister about it. He'll tell us, hey, you know, you're gonna see Kyle, okay? Okay, okay to everything. This is so fake. There's nothing fake. It's so fake. It's so dramatic, it's so fake, it's so for show. It's just, it's just like, you know what? Seriously. You yeah, said so this needs to be positive, Kel. I can't, I'm, I'm not even myself right now. Okay, so I'm so positive. I'm so sickeningly positive right now. Okay? Are you happy? Are you happy? I might as well be a mannequin right here. Okay? Kelly, the help they've given Kyle is not fake. You understand? I mean, it's, they've done it. Please stop talking to me, please. Yeah. Knock, knock. Hey! Good to see you, Good to see you. How you doing, Kelly? How are you? Hi. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. How you doing? I'm all right. How about yourself? Same old, same old. Yeah? Yeah, me too. Just trying to make a go of it. Yeah. Do you have a problem being here and doing this? Because, listen, we can scrub this. I was just in the control room getting cards and stuff, getting ready to come in, and I'm listening to you say this is all just a bunch of drama for the show and all of this. That's insulting to me, and I'm not going to listen to that. And if you don't want to be here, then don't be here. You guys called me. I didn't call you, and I'm not going to put up with that crap. If you want to do what you want to do with Kyle, then do what you want to do with Kyle. But don't come in here and insult me, insult my staff, insult my show, and make threats and demands against me. I have been busting my butt to help your son. We've done everything we can to help him. Uh, we've been over backwards to do it and are continuing to do it and have flown him here today, flown his counselor here today, have him in a treatment. This is you and me talking about this young man struggling for his life. Do you want to talk to Kyle first? Why? To tell him that our relationship is more important than the show and that whatever the outcome is of the show is that, you know, that I love him. Well, of course that's true. I mean, my relationship with him is more important than the show, and I haven't even met him. I just wanted to tell Kyle something before the show. That's all I wanted to do. Well, it's not what you want to do. You wanted to control and manipulate the situation, which is how you've gotten in this predicament already. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Sorry I feel what way? The way that you're feeling. Do you disagree? Yeah. It's up to us to accept the help, Kel. If we want help, then accept it. If we, if you don't, then as Dr. Phil says, it's all over with. Other people see what we go through. There's hundreds of people. We've watched the show a hundred times, and we've learned from it. I agree with that. Let me tell you, to me, I have one interest here, and that's Kyle. Yes. But this is becoming about you. You, know, you say, oh, this is drama. You're creating the drama. Nobody else is creating the drama. You're creating the drama. You're pouting, you're, you're pissed off, and you, you want to get your way. So instead of us talking about Kyle and how we move him to the next level, how we solidify the progress that he's made, how we help this young man get some traction and direction, to continue the hard work that he's been doing, we're, we're talking about you being mad because you don't control the schedule and the agenda. That's interesting. What's interesting about that? It seems like you say that to a lot of moms. The ones that enable their sons hear that a lot. But I tell you what, you, you want to control the agenda to get happy? Let's run your agenda. What would you like to do? Would you like to talk with Kyle? Let's bring Kyle in. We'll, we'll let you talk with Kyle. We're gonna run your agenda today instead of mine. And, you know, maybe, maybe that'll work out fine. So we'll have Kyle, we'll have Kyle come in. Hey, Kyle. How are you? Phil McGraw, how you doing, nice buddy? Nice to meet you. Good looking Hi. young man. Hi, Hey, Kyle. How are you, sir? How are this guy? You doing all right? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Good man. Your mother wanted to talk to you before she wanted to talk to me, so what I just you want wanted to, say? to that's all I wanted to do. Okay. Anything else? That was it. Okay, you good then? Mm-hmm. Okay, will you excuse us for a few minutes, then we'll bring you back in, because I want to talk to them for a couple of minutes about some 
parent issues, and then we're going to talk to you. But she wanted to see you, so I thought we'd let you come out and say hello to everybody. We'll, we'll have you back in here in just a very few minutes, okay? Thank you. All right, good. I'm good to meet you finally. Nice meeting you. <clears throat> I appreciate that. That's all I wanted to do. Um, okay, what would you like to do now? That was all I really wanted to do. Thank you for satisfying my need for love and affection. Did you say what you needed to say? I just wanted <clears throat> to do that. Well, I thought you were going to tell him that your relationship is more important than this show, and I don't think you told him that. I told him with a hug and with... That's it. So, what do, what do y'all want to do now? What's been your history with drug and alcohol? I have a history. Do you use now? I have a marijuana license, but I didn't renew it. Did, did you ever smoke it with him? I just gave him a little one time. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. She didn't notice that her baby wasn't breathing. After losing her son. It's my fault. They couldn't protect him. Drugs numb the pain. I didn't want to feel anything. Are you an addict? Yes. But there are questions. Were you taking any drugs when you lost your son? Her family didn't ask. You don't want to know, do you? No, I don't. Don't you think you should? That's tomorrow. We now return to Can This Family Be Saved? An intervention. So, what do, what do you all want to do now? We're off my agenda, because I, I would not have done this I think it's wrong but we've done it so we're now on your track what what would you what questions do you have for me what can I answer for you Dr. Phil I, I'm I apologize I don't know what to say other than the fact that I, I I'm truly sorry that you know that that this happened I, I really thought that things were going to be positive with Kelly and that she wouldn't understand but she she has her own agenda Kyle has, has improved dramatically in the, the family sessions that we had with him. He has really done a remarkable job. He's done his part in this deal, and, and obviously, as you told us a long time ago, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and we have as much work to do as Kyle does. We've reached out to you for help, and I'm sitting here telling you I need help to at least be able to deal with the situation with both Kelly and Kyle. Whether you guys work with me or whether you don't, it's up to you. If there aren't major changes made, whether you make them with my help and all the resources I make available to you, or you go find some others on your own, if you don't make some major changes, this young man's life is in danger. It, it, it just is. Absolutely. Do you two believe that you personally and as a couple and as a family are ready for him to come home? No. Yes and no. I don't think that we're in the right neighborhood to bring him back. I don't think we have the right school for him to come home to. What do you think have been the major influences that have gotten him here? Well, we definitely moved to the wrong neighborhood. Why is the neighborhood so bad? I've driven through y'all's neighborhood. I didn't hear any gunshots. I, I didn't see any any gangs and lowriders coming by. It looked like a beautiful place to be to me. It is. There's no question that, that, the, that the environment at home has been a contributor. It's been unstable. Um, it's been volatile. Uh, it's been inconsistent. I think you could put us in, in, in the best neighborhood in America. It's not going to change what happens inside uh, as a family. What do you think has happened inside that has contributed? Well, we fight a lot. As Tony's more apt to follow the discipline that is set up, I cave. If we set up a discipline plan or whatever, Kyle will get out of it with me. Look, if you guys 